Hi, my health enthusiasts. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Ivy, and I'm so glad that you're here. Um, hi, six week post baby update, and two really exciting things. I got cleared for working out, one, and I got cleared for sexy time, <laughs> which is also really, really great. Um, and I'm just gonna be super transparent. I know I have been this whole time as far as my. Uh, uh, journey and pregnancy journey and I know for me the videos that I watched when I was pregnant and like the things I was scared about I know the women that su were super raw in videos that I watched was so helpful you know we get enough of the lukewarm stuff out there right and so like someone needs to say all the things that aren't being said <laughs> and so if I have to make that sacrifice that's fine um, but yeah so I was cleared for sexy time. Now, disclaimer, uh, <laughs> we actually tried it before I was cleared. Um, I felt good. Uh, my husband was feeling like I was feeling good and like everything was okay. So we went ahead and tried it and it was fine. And I know there's all these fears and when you haven't been through it, I totally get it because now having been on both sides, I get it because you just, I don't know, you just don't know. I think there's this fear that like, like the baby's gonna like come out and just like, I don't know, take everything with it, I guess. And that's not what happens at all. So it was fine. Uh, my husband just said, you know, it felt different, but it wasn't bad to me. It felt almost like better for some reason. Um, I have no idea why. Uh, if you watched my birth story, in my healing after labor, you know that I did have a tear, but that everything felt fine and I felt really good and that sounds really weird, <laughs> but it was fine. It was totally fine. Now, to be fair, you know, my husband and I have been together for a very long time. We have a very healthy relationship when it comes to that. And uh, so, I don't know. I think it really depends on your relationship and your partner and just kind of knowing each other and, and trusting each other. I think that's a big part of it. Was I scared? Yes. I mean, that was definitely a component for sure in the whole process. Like I was just nervous that it was gonna hurt. So that was definitely um, something that I took into account. But, so there's that. Um, a couple questions that you guys had asked about on my Instagram and I wanna go ahead and just go over them. And I'll probably do this again on another video if you guys want, but just questions that you guys had. Uh, one of them was, did you get the vitamin K shot? I did not, and I've been very um, quiet, and I'll probably continue to be quiet as far as my vaccine uh, thoughts and feelings and journey. I think most of you know my background and know uh, where I come from. I think a lot of you know that I'm 30, almost 31 years old, and I've never had a vaccine. So if that kind of tells you where my philosophy is on that, um, but as far as the vitamin K shot, I took uh, the greens powder, which I talked about in a lot of my other videos leading up to birth. Um, not sponsored, it's just a powder that I love. And um, it had 100% of your vitamin K. So I was taking that uh, leading up to birth to really get the vitamin K in my system and then I was continuing to take it after birth and smoothies and stuff just to keep my vitamin K high uh, through my breast milk and to the babe. So there's that. Um, another question was the asparagus juice. What was asparagus juice for and how do you make it? Asparagus juice. You just boil asparagus like you normally would and you drink the water. You can eat the asparagus too, of course, um, but I was doing that at the end of my uh, labor or excuse me at the end of my pregnancy to keep the bloating down and keep my kidneys functioning so towards the end of your pregnancy the baby starts to urinate a lot and so you're filtering your uh, waste as well as the baby's waste which you are your entire pregnancy but towards the end the baby's kidneys are fully developed and so the baby starts filtering and so you have to filter that and yours and so if you are not uh flushing your own system excuse me you're gonna get swollen, you're gonna get really, really swollen. And so you'll see women who consume a lot of dairy tend to get preeclampsia, and they swell a lot more than women who don't consume dairy. And anyways, just a way to do that is the asparagus juice. And a lot of you guys asked about that. So um, you can juice it, of course, you can drink the water, whatever's easier for you. I, towards the end of my pregnancy, found that drinking the water was just easier for me, and then I would eat the asparagus too. So there's that. Um, 
a lot of you guys asked about my placenta encapsulation. I did do some video footage on this. Um, I might do a video on it. I want to make sure that it feels good to me first. And so I just started taking them yesterday and we'll see. I don't know. I did have a really hard time sleeping last night. So I don't know if it was because of that or not. I've heard it gives you a lot of energy. So was it that? Was it just me being anxious? I'm not really sure. But I got up I think at 3 a.m. and took my magnesium just to get some more sleep <laughs> baby was sleeping great that's the worst part when I wake up I'm so exhausted and the baby's like snoring basically and has been for four or five hours and I can't sleep that is the worst so I got up and took um, some magnesium <sighs> at 3 a.m. and then was able to sleep really really good so baby's been sleeping incredible um, aside from during the day uh, sometimes I'm like you know What's worse, the fact that baby sleeps really good at nighttime and doesn't sleep during the day, or that she doesn't sleep during the day but sleeps at night. I'm just like, you know, lesser of two evils. When she doesn't sleep during the day, I can't get very much done. And then, you know, she sleeps really good at night, so I, you know, what's, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, we did just start the baby wise schedule though. So if you guys have seen that book or heard of that book, uh, one of my clients, the hair company that I work for, my extensions are by um, baby wise. They got me that book. And so I've been not reading it. I've been kind of spark notes in it, obviously, because I'm busy with babe. But um, before baby came, I was reading it a little bit. And so we're following that schedule, which is uh, feed, play, sleep. And so you kind of do that in rotation and is Barley sleeping two to three hours or one to two hours? No, absolutely not. But following that routine, this is day two of trying to do it. Um, it's been really, really good actually. So I'll post on my Instagram again, that kind of schedule. I know a lot of you guys have asked about it. Do you have to follow it, you know, to the T? No, but I think it's a really good way, especially as new moms to get like on a system uh, with the baby and just to kind of get into that routine. So for me, it's been good to kind of have a guideline and um, follow that. So we'll see. I put her down last night, I think at seven for a nap. I think my husband brought her into the room at like nine. I was, so I went to bed at eight because I was really tired and I told my husband, I'm like, bring her in, you know, if she wakes up, assuming she'd wake up at like midnight like she normally does. No, she woke up I think at nine, hungry, which is fine. Uh, so I fed her and then just slept with her. We are co-sleeping. I know there's a lot of uh, controversy on this and do I wake up in a panic sometimes? Yes, but uh, I sleep with her just like in my arm, usually on my side. I'll feed her right on my side in the middle of the night and then we'll just fall asleep like that. I do make sure that there's no like loose blankets anywhere. There's no blankets up by her head. There's no blankets over me um, up here. There's no loose pillows except for the one that I'm sleeping with and that's it. So as far as all my pillows on my bed, the, I throw them all off at nighttime. My husband has his pillows. I have my one and everything else gets thrown off just because I don't want anything to fall on her or um, yeah. So there's a lot, I know a lot of people have said a lot of, about like smothering when you're sleeping there is a lot of um cross crossing if you will of sids and co-sleeping so it's really hard to say you know is it from sids sudden infant death syndrome or is it from close sleeping so i know i'm a new mom and i'm definitely not um ignorant to things that have happened and what's going on out there but i also know i have to do what's right for me so yeah, anyways, this video was kind of all over the place and jumbled, but I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and follow me on Instagram. I'll probably post a question tonight and then try to write them all down and then answer them on this video next time. So I'm also going to be trying the LV trainer. So we'll get that going now that I'm cleared from the doctor. So we'll see what that's like and um, yeah, get my, my pelvic floor strength back. So anyways, thanks for watching you guys and I will see you on my next video. Bye.